Hey there, I'm Ken, this is Canadian Retro Things, and today I'm upgrading my Coco 3. What upgrade am I doing to my Coco 3 this time, you ask? Well, if you've seen the video where I traveled to Coco Fest, then you'll see that one of the things I picked up from Computer Connect was this keyboard replacement board. I'll put a link into the description where you can get one of these if you want. I'll also put a link in the description to that video if you haven't seen it, so you can see what other goodies I picked up. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to put that board into my Coco 3, even though at this time my keyboard in that computer is working perfectly fine. It's not going to be that way forever. So I guess you could look at this as some preventative future proofing. I'm also going to compare this board to the old board to see uh, what upgrades this has. And of course, I'm going to be trying it out. But before I start taking anything apart, I want to give a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. At PCBWay, they'll print custom circuit boards for you starting for as little as $5. But what about options? Yes, there are many options, some of which are the base material of the board, the thickness, the color of the solder mask, the number of connective layers of the board, and many others. But it's not just circuit board printing that they offer, they also offer other services including assembly services, CNC machining, 3D printing. So if you have a project that you want to build, PCBWay is a great place to start. Here is the Coco 3 ready to be taken apart. It is simply, should be six screws. Mine only has five because it's missing one right there, but and the case top lifts off like that. Now the only thing we need to work on is of course the keyboard here so lifts out like that and the ribbon cable just comes straight out like that. Now we can put the bottom portion away and leave the keyboard in, sitting in the case. And we'll want something under it here to prop this up so that the keys are not touching. Otherwise, all of the screws will possibly go flying. So we'll use the big old bar that I have right there. Now I've got to take out all of these tiny little screws. So I just got to go find my screwdriver for that and get to work on that. I am going to guess that possibly somebody has been into this uh, keyboard before as a number of the screws here are actually uh, stripped in the head. So I uh, gotta use a slightly different method to get them out. I got a different screwdriver here. It's got a angled uh, flat head so if you can find one little piece for it to bite on you can often get a stripped screw out. It's a handy little screwdriver to have. There we go. So carefully lift the top off. So you don't lose any of the springs. So that's just the backing board. There we go, and that is what was the keyboard uh, control board that I had in there. So let's take a closer look at this compared to the new one I'm putting in. 
here you have them side by side the original coco 3 keyboard which also came with this nice metal backing plate and the new coco 3 keyboard that i'm putting in there you can obviously tell the first big difference is that this one is all switches and a solid PCB board. Whereas this one is a two level Mylar board that just goes by um, the pressure of being pushed together. And one of my favorite differences here is that this one has a solid connector on it whereas this one just has the old junky uh, ribbon connector that they often will crack and break over time. That's usually the one of the main things that goes wrong with these. And there's also the added thing on this new board that has a switch here for Coco 2 mode and Coco 3 mode. On the Coco 3 keyboard, of course, you have the four arrows over here. And it's also nicely silk screened on here, which are the arrows. Let's bring up a picture of my old Coco 2, the video that I shot of my Coco 2. And you can see on the keyboard there that the arrows are on opposite sides of the uh, keyboard. Because there's a lot of Coco 1 and 2 games that are built to be used with the arrows. So if you're using the arrows on your Coco 3 keyboard, your hands are all scrunched up over here. If you flip that switch over to Coco 2 mode, then your left and right arrows are over here, and your up and down arrows become your Alt and your Control keys over here for playing those old Coco 1 and 2 design games. And if you par chance do happen to uh, knock a lot of these springs off, one thing to remember is that the green spring is the one for the space bar. It's nice that they've made it a different color. On most of the other keyboards I've worked for, they just make this spring slightly larger, which of course it is here, but it's also a different color, which makes it so much easier to spot if you, say, are washing the board or, you know, taking all the springs off to clean them. All right, so obviously that's the key, the space bar, space bar there. So what you have to do is carefully line this up. There's a little post there to put it on. Now let's look at the new screws that are provided. They're slightly bigger. So he suggests gently holding the board down and putting the center screws in about three turns. Now once you have the center screws in, you can flip it over Try pushing a couple of keys in. Okay, that actually feels pretty good for the amount of pressure you have to put to make it click. So now let's put the rest of the screws in about the same. Now that I have all the screws in at about the same depth, take the keyboard out, flip it over, and then try each key. This should take approximately the same amount of pressure to make them click. And if you can't hear that clicking, here's my microphone. So 
So it's now become a nice clicky keyboard. Now this should just plug in really nice and easily in here. There we go. That should just sit right there. Beauty. So let's hook this up and try it out. Let's turn it on and see what happens. There we go. First off, let's write a little program. And run. It works, it works, it works, it works, it works. So now I'll give you a little example of a game play where, uh, you know, the, the um, arrows can be switched over to the other side like the original Coco 1 and 2 board. So let's just reset the computer. Now obviously Thexter is not a game that was made for the Coco 1 and 2, but we'll load that up because it's a good example of it. So here you go, you can see the Alt and the Control keys currently do nothing. Back and forth does back and forth, up jumps, down turns you into your little plane. So you can use the, the four keys over here, it's not that hard, it's more like a PC, but if you're more comfortable switching it over, turn it into Coco 2 mode, and all of a sudden your Alt key will jump. Your control key will turn you into the plane. And one of the things about it is that these two keys actually still work over here. So, that is uh, putting it into the Coco 2 mode and turning your alt and your control keys into the up and down arrows. Additional up and down arrows, I guess you would say. So, I guess there's nothing left to do but put this back together. Well, there we go. That worked out great. It wasn't that hard to put in. The keyboard feels great. It works great. I'm super happy about that. Remember, if you want one of those replacement boards for yourself, check out the Computer Connect link in the description. But I guess I have nothing else to say today, but thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, to subscribe, and to comment below. I guess uh, that means that it is time for me to maybe cook some hot dogs over the fire today. So I will see you next time.